Paul Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the South. More specifically, today we are back in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and it feels good to be home. Uh, it, seems like, it feels like it's been some time since I've been here in Gatlinburg. I wanted to come and do uh, the chili cook-off uh, back in November, but unfortunately, I had already had plans to be in Florida for IAPA. So I uh, got a chance to come up back up here to Gatlinburg. Kind of my uh, kind of kind of my home base for a while. I used to be uh, live I used to live right well, I technically still still live out about an hour and a half from here. But uh, this past year I've been traveling so much um, that I really haven't had a chance to come by and see how the town of Gatlinburg is doing, what's what's new, what's gone, what's changing. So here we come up here to Gatlinburg and kind of document uh, the current status of this wonderful tourist town. So please, follow me. I did want to stop by and see how uh, Blind Shot Barnaby was doing over here at Circus Golf. And uh, there's old Blind Shot there with his friends. Oh, you can see a little movement. Okay, he just shot his gun there. I saw the head in the box turning a little bit. Oh yeah, he's, oh yeah, he's still moving. You know, he's getting older, and older animatronics. You know, their movements change. They get a little stiff, but as long as he's still, as long as he's still dangling that gun, he, uh, he is in working order. See a little bit of his robotics exposed there on his forearm. You trying to, oh, I think he's trying to say something. He's trying to trying to tell us something there. Oh yeah, there you go. The head is moving back there. And it is good to see that the Gatlinburg snowmen are out. During the fall season, they have the Gatlinburg scarecrows, then once winter hits, they're switched over to the Gatlinburg Snowman. You can see this one here. It's got uh, the hard hat on and the glowing vest. Looks similar to the one that was actually uh, stolen uh, a few years back. Over here at Hollywood Star Cars. We can kind of check and see what uh, new cars they have here out front. Now, this is a 1966 custom Peterbilt truck that was used in the film Hobbs and Shaw, which yeah, Fast and Fu it says Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. Now you know what? I have never seen a Fast and the Furious movie, but through my travels, I feel like I've seen every vehicle that was ever uh, in a Fast and the Furious movie between all the different car museums I visited. And it says, please do not touch little Herbie here on the sidewalk. He's been sitting here for so, quite some time. Ever since I first started coming to Gatlinburg, this little Herbie has been here. I, if I remember correctly, he's actually meant to drive on ice as he was part of like an ice skating show. You can see that T-Rex looming above the streets of Gatlinburg here at Ripley's Moving Theater, which is in 5D. Oh, look at that guy. Is he gonna roar? You gonna roar for us? No, he's not. And here inside the moving theater, we do have one of the most interesting Zoltars. And here is the truthful bear. It's a bear that never lies. Let's give him a dollar and hear the truth. All right, bear, eat my dollar. Ah, see when the edges curl up like that. There we go. Listen closely. The truthful bear has a word just for you. He who laughs last thinks slower. Be quick to laugh, my friend. It is life's best medicine. Oh, there he goes. See him roaring. Ah, oh, the mighty dinosaur. Now these are the uh, seats inside the Ripley's Moving Theater. Uh, you can see you gotta, yes, you hold on to these, and then the whole seat rumbles and knocks you around. And over here, in front of Bubba Gump Shrimp Company, we have a custom Forrest Gump style 
snowman. What would we call a uh, a forest gump made of made of snow? Would we call him forest 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 lump of snow? Yeah, that wasn't very good. If you have a better name for a snow forest gump, leave a comment in the comment section. You know they say that life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Actually, not true. If you look at the bottom of the box, it will show you exactly what it is you're about to eat. They do have a photo up here where you can actually step inside Forrest Gump's shoes. He even has the little feather that floated down and landed on his shoe. Let's see. Yeah, I can't really, can't really get my Crocs in there. Maybe if I took my Crocs off. Oh, I almost got stuck there for a second. Peeking into the Forrest Gump gift shop here, well, they have all sorts of merch, including the ever popular red Bubba Gump hat. You can see their adorable little mascot, who is a a happy shrimp. I've actually seen the full costume shrimp before. Uh, I don't know if he's ever been here in Gatlinburg, but uh, outside of other Bubba Gumps, I've seen the walk around character shrimp. Of course, they got the original shrimp here. And if you're in the holiday mood. You have a, uh, a festive Christmas shrimp. Shrimp also comes in the tie-dyed variety. The classic uh, stupid is as stupid does shirt. And you know what? I hate this. <laughs> this right here. For whatever reason. You know, there, there is a lot of, you know. There, there's a few stretches in the movie. But for some reason when they... Uh, when Forrest Gump wiped his muddy face and it created the smiley face, that was that was the part that like that's the only part that like truly takes me out of the movie. Like literally, if they just cut this scene out of the movie, it would make it a perfect movie. But because of this, it can never be a perfect movie. Spicy take, sorry. You can see you can get your own Forrest Gump slippers here in the shapes of his uh, his running shoes. There's another iconic animatronic figure here on the strip in Gatlinburg. You have this massive horse here actually riding a cowboy. See it's a role reversal here where the cowboy actually has to put on a saddle and let a horse ride on his back when it would normally be the other way around. And at the foot of Gatlinburg's iconic space needle we have Another snowman, this one riding in an elevator. Presumably the elevator that would take you to the top of the Space Needle. It has a little Space Needle engraved in his hat. Oh wow, look at this. They've got this street actually blocked off for construction. You can see the uh, Gatlinburg Skylift there going up the mountain. And uh, this was previously uh, right here where all this construction is taking place. This was the loading station. Yeah, it still is the loading station. You can see it's functioning right there, but looks like they're building some brand new structure here. Um, interesting to see what that will be. And it's interesting that they have the uh, whole street blocked off here while they're doing construction. Let's take a closer peek. Yeah, it does not look like the street is permanently closed or is being uh, renovated. But I guess they just needed the room here to park this crane. It's, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's uh, moving that beam right there. So yeah, active construction site right here in the middle of Gatlinburg. Somehow connected to the sky lift here. I don't know, it could be as simple as them wanting more uh, you know, retail room or something like that. Or they could be adding on and, and upping their game of their attraction which you do see a lot. Um, the, uh, it's almost like the Skylift here in Anakista, almost in an arms race to uh, be the superior Skylift based attraction. So always adding things to both this attraction and to Anakista, which you know, the tourists win because you keep getting new cool stuff. And yeah, just mind wondering what this is gonna be. You can see as they put that beam in place and oh where's that where's that beam going oh yeah you can see him putting the beam into place there and uh see the gentleman there fastening the beam to the structure yeah i wonder what that's going to end up being 
Do you know Hiking Snowman? All right, and here we go. All right, so we're actually gonna take a ride up to the top of the Gatlinburg Skylift. And uh, you can see some of the construction back there. Apparently, I talked to one of the employees, they're actually going to be uh, making a station that can load larger gondolas. So instead of just having the benches, they're gonna have gondolas as well. And I'm not sure exactly, you can see that back there, how that's going to um, connect to this, if it's going to uh, replace their old launch station or if there's maybe two launch stations. I don't know, but yeah, the, 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 what is going on, they're trying, like I, I even mentioned, uh, you know, the Skybridge, the Skylift, and Anakista, always kind of competing with each other to add new things, so they're adding the gondolas, much like Anakista has. The, uh, they're always, you know, the two sky, uh, ski lift based mountain attractions here, always trying to, to do a little one up on each other. But like I said, competition's good for everyone because us as tourists just get more cool stuff. Now, uh, you can see back there some of the wreckage from uh, Christ in the Smokies. They've demolished that attraction, and what I heard was that the Skylift was actually going to turn that into a dedicated parking lot. All right, this is the part where it gets really scary. You start heading straight up the mountain. Always look along the woods here to see if I can spot a bear as we're ascending. Now, I don't uh, see a bear right now, but hopefully you know, the bears do stay in the forest and don't climb up here because you know the rules. No bears on chairs. Back behind me, you can see the city of Gatlinburg, the Space Needle coming out right there in the center. So yeah, these chairs here have not been around that long, uh, maybe about uh, five years or so. Uh, the original ski lift was actually damaged in the big fire that uh, consumed uh, the surrounding areas here. So yeah, I don't know if this is going, if they're gonna have to alter this or uh, I guess they're gonna have to alter it in some way or, uh, or how much they're actually gonna change uh, the sky lift itself. Yeah, the Skylift used to basically just be an attraction onto itself. You rode to the top of the mountain, there was a little gift shop up here, and that's it. But they've greatly expanded it in the last few years. There's a little gift shop they have on the top of the mountain. Here in Gatlinburg, you can buy bears doing almost anything. It's together forever, the two bears kissing. We got bears doing yoga. We got a bear cooking sausages over a campfire with a moose. These bears here are deeply religious. And this entire rack here is just different bear snow globes. This, of course, is my favorite right here. Jen actually has this one. She bought it at a different tourist stop while she was here. No bears on chairs. You can see the snowflakes and Christmas trees amongst the waterfalls. Little relaxation area here. Why uh, people sit in their chairs and enjoy the beautiful mountain views. And from here we can see the competitor. You can see Anakista across the way there. They have their own ski lift and own uh, grouping of attractions there on top of that mountain. And here we are at <laughs> the perilous sky bridge you can see their uh, viewing tower there known as the tulip tower they have a little walkway that can take you around so you don't have to walk on the bridge here yeah it always gets me when you see how high we are above the space needle here and look at that that's just a beautiful beautiful view no arguing how beautiful Gatlinburg is they got Christmas lights strung up along the bridge here. It's hard to see because it's uh, because it's light outside, but they're they are glowing. And of course, the notorious glass floor here, where you can see the wilderness underneath your feet. See the, the blue tarp down there? We walk by it for those of you on. Uh, 
which shows kind of the timeline of Skylift in relation to the 2016 fire. As you can see, 1954, it was just, just a ski lift. There was nothing, no attractions up here. And of course, this is the form I was familiar with. This is before the fire. They had, you know, the one little gift shop up here and the ski lift, which unfortunately was completely destroyed here. This photo that occurred after the fire. And then 2019, they reopened, brand new facility there, and, uh, and began to add a few other things, such as the Sky Bridge and the Tulip Tower. And there's the uh, flag that was waving above the sky lift uh, during the 2016 fire. See, it's been singed there. And we head back downward to the bottom of the mountain. Appreciate it. Here, just wanted to give a shout out to Gatlinburg Hussey for helping me with the Skyride tickets. How you doing, guys? Pleasure to meet you, guys. And where can they find you on? You have a YouTube channel as well? The Gatlinburg Hussey, yes. See, we were just up there. You can see the little ants walking across that bridge. Those are human beings. Here at the Gatlinburg Inn, we have a snowman band belting out some, uh, some chilly tunes. And here is a major change to the Gatlinburg landscape. As you look over here at this empty lot, this used to be where Hucker's Sports Bar, as well as the China Bazaar were at. There was a fire a few weeks ago where they burnt pretty severely. I think the 420 Cafe was also consumed with fire. And uh, yeah, just look at this, you almost wouldn't even notice this. It's been completely leveled, kind of jarring that there's just nothing where there used to be something. So you can see this snow person there giving a bottle to their snow baby. See the snow baby there with a the pacifier in the mouth. See these two snow people doing some sort of gymnastic routine. This snowman here reading something deeply unsettling. Now, one question I've been getting peppered with the last few years is what is going to happen to the building used by World of Illusion and it is finally reopened as something else. It is the Tennessee Stud Cider Company. So it looks like uh, the classic World of Illusions has been transformed into a cider bar. And as we enter, we see it is completely unrecognizable in here. There's, there's, no, uh, there's no caveman squeezing water out of a rock. There's no uh, werewolf turning in to Corey Feldman. There's no uh, Superman looking at a woman's underwear through her dress. Just rows and rows of cider. It does look like they have free tasting here at the bar. The blueberry pop tart has been scraped out with some alcohol mixed in. All right. So we have our blueberry cider sample here. And of course, I want to make a toast to the world of illusions that we have lost too soon. So we stand in the empty husk that once was the world of illusions. We'll now try this blueberry cider. Ooh, that's yummy. So as much as I miss the world of illusion, this is all very, very tasty. Um, and I guess it adds another layer to the uh, Gatlinburg alcohol sampling uh, experience. And look at this. They've added some uh, Christmas cheer to Earthquake the Ride. So I got some behind the scenes info on Earthquake the Ride. Uh, my friend Larry, who runs the Darkness Haunted House in St. Louis, and he also helps create 
different attractions and rides around the country. He helped create Garfield the Ride at Kennywood, as well as Ghostwood Estates at Kennywood. And uh, he created, him and his company created Earthquake the Ride. Of course, people riding Earthquake the Ride often ask, why is there a gorilla? Why is there an alligator? Of course, the gorilla and the alligator, probably my two favorite parts of the ride, but apparently uh, they were taken from a uh, closed down rainforest cafe, so when they were designing Earthquake the Ride, they decided to add the alligator and the gorilla from the rainforest cafe into the Earthquake ride. Of course, of course I could never pass up an opportunity to ride Earthquake, so let's hop aboard the train. What do you think, guys? All right, I've got the whole ride to myself here. Went back here. Had a glimpse of the gorilla in that box. Oh, there he is, the gorilla. That's actually not the original gorilla. It was replaced uh, a few years back. Oh, look at that! There's movie posters there for Rush Hour. original alligator from the Rainforest Cafe. That's the new alligator they added a few years back. Oh, the box is to open the gorilla screen. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, and there's the gorilla again. The jump scare. The next door over here at Treasure Golf, we have the Gorilla's cousin right there. Yeah, so much is changing here on the once familiar strip of Gatlinburg. It used to be Gatlinburg was always the same. No matter uh, how many times you came, it always had the same stuff, same classic stuff, but you know, stuff is being torn down and rebuilt rather rapidly these days. You can see this whole section here has been demolished and they're building something in its place. This snowman here is unique in that it doesn't have sticks for arms and legs, it actually has solid snow arms and legs. And of course you have to say our obligatory hello to Beauregard the bear. Hope you're doing good, you silly old bear. And over here, the snowman looks like it has one of Beauregard's uh, children in a wagon. I've come over here to Anakista. You can see their beautiful, massive Christmas tree there. We went up to the top of the Gatlinburg Skylift. I think it's only fair that we head up and check out Anakista as well. And there we have the perfect Gatlinburg photo op. It is a bear. It is on a ski lift. He's got his camera for taking photos, his beer for getting drunk, and his two little children crawling on his shoulders. By the way, this is not a safe way to behave on a skylift. You, uh, you wouldn't want your children up there on your shoulders because they could, they could fall off. It's chilly. Looks like we can head up there and enjoy Anakista, and they have a enchanted night walk. That's new since the last time I've been here. It's called Astra. Lumina. Be interesting to check that out. Our chariot coming up right behind me there. Now this is interesting. They've added this since the last time I was here. They've added a map onto the safety bar so you can watch. Look at this and uh, plan out your day at Anakista while you're still in the chairlift. There is the Chandalas. You can have like a self-enclosed car, but the line is much, much longer, so I went for the standard uh, chairlift style car. Just after riding the Skylift and Anakista lift in the same day, it does seem that the Skylift Mountain is taller and the uh, ski lift is a little shorter here 
over at Anakisa. You can see I'm still pretty high up here. You can look back and see the station down there. And uh, where's the Space Needle? Space Needle, oh there we go. Here's the Space Needle right there. For some reason we're moving at a snail's pace up here. Yeah, just barely eking forward. I always worry about this house here below the ski lift. Just worry that uh, people are gonna throw trash in their chimney. And that could start a chimney fire. Oh my, it's getting a little chilly up here. I feel underdressed as the sun is setting. It's, uh, it's getting a little cold out here. See here, actually heading over top the road. Oh, there's some more chandalas coming. And yes, they're called chandalas. I think uh, Anakista actually came up with that term themselves. I think it's a cross between a chair and a gondola. Yeah, it does take a little bit longer to get to the top than it does at the sky lift. This, uh, this one keeps stopping and slowing down. I think it's so that they can uh, load the chandalas. So it does, uh, it does slow down the ride time. And it does take a little longer to get to the top than it does at the sky lift, uh, even though I think this is technically a little bit shorter. Alright, we finally made it to the top of the mountain. You can see the city of Gatlinburg lit up from up here. Got the Space Needle there in the middle. And then there is the Sky Lift and the Sky Bridge where we were earlier. You can see how they're lit up for the holidays. And looking at it now, I thought this, this mountain seemed smaller, but it looks like we're we are pretty much on equal footing with the Sky Bridge. And you can see up here, they're all decked out for Christmas. Here in the little village at the top of Anakista. You can see there the highest point in Anakista is their tower there. The Ana Vista Tower. And then uh, heading here through the Vista Gardens, where they do have some lights hanging down for the Christmas winter season. The lights twinkling and doing a little show here as we walk through. Very, very pretty. As we walk through this gate of bears here. Oh yeah, we have the bear venture. We have to balance on this wooden pole here. Oh my goodness. About fell. Oh my gosh. This is fairly, fairly treacherous here. It's the hand railing. And whenever I'm here, I like to come and visit Willow here. One of my uh, favorite things up here at uh, Anakista. It's kind of like a tree spirit of some sort. And you are allowed to climb on it. It just says, please don't climb above Willow's lap. So yeah. Keep it, keep it above the equator. That waits a minute. Hey, we got a total round. How you doing, buddy? So we've conquered the bear venture, but now we try our hand at the tree venture. We'll enter through here. Oh yeah, we got. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's. Oh my gosh. Oh, what am I? What am I even walking on here? Oh my gosh. Oh jeez. This is more difficult than it looks. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what the strategy is here. If you can see what I'm... Oh, oh, it's like trying to 
balance on some sort of accordion. I'm just, oh jeez. Oh, why is this so hard? Oh my God. Given it would be easier if I put the camera away and used both hands, but still, oh jeez. Oh, 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 oh. Where'd you put it? Oh, jeez. Oh. From here you can look down and see the Astro Lumina walk through, which I've never done, so I'm excited to check that out here in a little bit. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna break my ankle. Okay, okay. This is, it doesn't move as much. It's a little more taut. Okay, so just one foot in front of the other. Oh my god. Look. Oh, like only it's like it's only like being on like a tightrope with steps on it. Oh, oh, oh. just moved to one side. Oh my god. This is I'm I'm genuinely terrified. I'm genuinely terrified here. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. So we're gonna take another perilous walk across these stumps or are we gonna find out what's down this deep dark hole? Uh, let's go with the hole. All right, and there we go. <laughs> oh, that one's kind of fun. <clears throat> okay, now my only way to get out of here is to use this construction here. I guess you have to like, you have to, oh my gosh, you have to like, walk along the beam here. Oh. oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's like walking on a balancing beam, but you do have these these logs here to to hold on to. This is, a, this is an intense play area. I didn't know, I did not know what I was getting into. <laughs> Almost, almost fell. There's a net down there, but it just felt like I was gonna fall off the mountain. Oh, get me off this thing. Oh no. Oh dear. We got this thing here. I don't, okay. I guess just gotta crawl up here. And then, and then, we gotta, okay. So it's like, it's like little steps. So we gotta kind of worm our way up to the top. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. Which higher is this? Oh. Okay. We're almost, almost out here. Ouch. Oh. I'm surprised I made it out. And then finally we finish our tree venture on these things. Oh. What, what a tree venture this truly is. Oh. And accomplished. So I guess we should go and check out the highest point here in Gatlinburg at the top of the Ana Vista Tower. The Ana Vista Tower, definitely a very starey experience. So many stairs. Going all the way to the top. Whew. Oh, 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 a lot of stairs. We go finally made it to the top of the Ana Vista Tower. You can see the charming Christmas glow of Gatlinburg. Zoom in there to the uh, to the sky lift, sky bridge. Work over there. We actually have a glass floor here to look. Oh, look at the bottom of the tower there see down to the bottom you can see the Christmas lights shining up through the glass floor and just look at 
all those little houses dotting the mountainside. And these prongs at the top function as a compass. That way is south, southwest, and west. So now it is time to head into Astralumina. This is an upcharge attraction. You'd have to pay an extra ticket to get in here, but uh, supposedly it's super cool. So uh, let's check this out. So entering Astra Lumina. We're always told to reach for the stars. What if the stars could reach for us? You can see the Astra Lumina map it takes us along the pathway there. All right, here we have the Astra Archway. This is very cool. I guess we walk through this magic archway. Oh, here talking. Very cool. Ooh. There's some really cool effects here right off the bat. This here is known as the Falling stars. See almost like a disc like. Almost reminds me of a UFO. Yeah, it looks like each station has like its own little light show that you can sit and observe. Oh, what's happening? Oh, you can see the, the fog rising up from the woods there. This next section we're entering is called the Cosmic Choir. You can see these orbs hanging from the trees. Oh no, lights are going crazy. Here is called the Stardust Rays. Oh wow. You can see all the flickering stars all about. Oh wow. Through all the little stars here. They twinkle, twinkle around us. This is really, really cool. The stars here as they twinkle all around us. Very, very interesting experience. So the stars just in all different directions. This stop is known as Stellar Visions. So the projections in the middle of this orb here. Interesting. You can see the galaxy there. Oh, whoa. What was that? Just closed like a camera shutter. Going through some sort of wormhole. Comets. And now we are heading through the Celestial Trail. See all the stars there on the ground. They'll light up as we walk through. Oh, even got like a layer of fog rising from the ground. Very, very beautiful. This glowing ball here in the woods is known as the Astral Genesis. Kind of looks like a big disco ball with a storm happening inside of it. Oh, look at that. All the different colors. Oh, you can see the fog pouring out. You can see it shimmering. Now 
now we enter the rise of the stars. Oh, look at that. See the stars bouncing up into the sky. Looks like they're already planning on opening up another attraction here at Anakista. It says Bird Venture opening summer 2023. So we have Bear Venture, we have Tree Venture coming up next. Bird Venture looks like they're adding some big long slides. Come down to the bottom there. So here's the tree house village it looks like this may be what they are expanding upon to create the bird venture yeah it looks like they may be connecting slides to these different bird houses where uh, people can slide down into the abyss there oh, all right all right, all right. Like, well there we go there Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah. nice. First try. There are a couple of reindeers here. This one's got candles in his antlers. And uh, this one here, I don't know what she has in her antlers. Uh, maybe snowballs or marshmallows or something? Definitely no shortage of bears here at Anakista. And it is time to depart the mountain. While we were up in Anakista, Gatlinburg turned their Christmas lights on. You can see the enchanted Christmas tree down here. With all the moving lights, like a light show on the side of a tree. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me here today in Gatlinburg, one of my favorite places in the country. It's always interesting coming into Gatlinburg these days. You never know what's new, what's popped up overnight, what's been demolished, what's been built in the place of the things that have been demolished. So very interesting to check back in. A lot going on here, and uh, definitely the Astra Lumina show at uh, Anakisa very very interesting a very unique experience but um, thank you guys so much for joining me if you like these videos please subscribe I travel around the country film roadside attractions amusement parks museums haunted houses and other fun stuff if you like to help support the channel consider donating to patreon three dollars or more we'll get you a postcard once a month from me to you also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop including the Fiji merman carpetbagger pin and all that information is in the description of this video and all that goes to help keep this train on the track this ski lift in the air and this boat in the water till next time my friends this one's in the bag <laughs>